Hello and welcome. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me today. I have a bit of a different project. This past week I shared a technique for using brusho with alcohol on glossy white paper. For the finished project, it didn't really work out well, and I know we all have those moments, but the brusho technique was really great, and I very much like the way that it came out. So I wanted to be sure to show this video and share exactly how to come about the technique in a couple of different ways. After the video was finished, I took a little break, cleared my head, and I came up with a new card project. So this is the project as it's completed, but you will not see the process in the video for the flowers. I hope you enjoy this technique. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I have a really fun technique. We're gonna test out some new things that I haven't tried before. So it could fail or it could succeed. We'll try it out together. I've got a little bit of happy mail and I've got some pictures from the summer camp to share with you all. So thank you for stopping in to spend some time with me today. I really appreciate it. And of course you can always get more access to my card making and my supplies, my crafty ideas at JennyHallDesign.com. And while you're there, you can click on subscribe to my blog if you'd like to get daily new emails um, that has all my blog information. There's a connection to my newsletter there and you can also click on shop now and that'll take you to my online Stampin' Up! store where you can make your Stampin' Up! purchase. So let's get started. I'm going to share some pictures that the children have made, some collages from summer camp. And hi, thanks, thanks everybody for, for joining me. Um, we're going to get started. So I'm going to flip this camera around a bit. It's going to take a little bit of moving. I've got these pictures from the kids. They've made some, um, the camp staff made some wonderful, some wonderful things. And I've also got some cards I can share with you. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my hand over this and I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to change the camera. There we go. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Betty. Thank you all for stopping by today. Got my computer mouse where I can see. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Anne Marie. Thank you all from stop for stopping by. So this is the collage that was given to Trip, and I think he might have had a hand in creating it. We make sure you can see the whole thing. So they had Reptile Day, they had Sports Day, they had all sorts of different days. Talent Day, which Trip sang a song for Pete the Cat. Um, coloring, and if you notice one common theme is Trip likes to put his tongue out whenever he has his picture taken. <laughs> it's just kind of his little special thing. But that's our trip, and he's he's a crazy boy. Uh, this is a chinchilla. That's some kind of a snake. That is, in fact, a hissing cockroach. Um, that is some kind of a tortoise. And here's him with the Pete the Cat. He's got a little stuffed Pete the Cat, but he was singing the song about Pete the Cat and his brand new white shoes. And that's a really fun song. Here is Nate's, and as you can see, it looks like Nate likes lots of stickers. A lot of the same animals and stuff, and, and that just creeps me out, so I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> That's so disgusting. Hi, Philomena, how are you? Uh, yes, Natalie, that is a giant snake. Uh, Trip can tell you what kind. It's like a python, some kind of yellow thing. This is a crocodile that has a piece of tape over its 
jaws so that it can't snap open. Um, this is the, it must have been some kind of poster here for Sports Day. They had Splash Day, um, water, you know, water day and outside Sports Day. And it looks like they also had a visit from Santa. So Nate had a lot of fun putting this together with his aide. This is his aide. Um, lots of fun, lots of fun stuff. They had a blast at summer. Hi Fran, how are you? Thanks for stopping over today. So I've got some fun, happy mail to share. Um, there's, these are some really fun Christmas and autumn cards that were swap cards. I belong to a swapping group. And I can't remember if, I don't see the envelope, so I can't tell you who made them. I'm so sorry. But um, I did not make these cards, but they are absolutely stunning. I particularly like how Look at how they, um, the letters are outlined. Isn't that cool? And this is some new holiday catalog. Wonderful stuff. Burmese Python. You're right, Betty. That's what Trip would tell you it is. I don't, I don't, I don't really, uh, snakes are not my thing. <laughs> I'm not really a snake person. So this card was a big surprise. This was from my friend Cindy Blancett. And it was just such a, a wonderful note in the mail, um, thanking me for being a part of um, the SUO Challenges design team. And look at all of the rainbow colors and how she's mixed them together. It's beautiful. And this little die cut here is stacked up four pieces high and glued together. And then there's loads of Wink Stella. I don't know, I'm sure if you can see how much shine is there, but it's absolutely beautiful. Let me see if I can zoom in I can't it will not let me zoom in I'm sorry okay so this is from Cindy and it was a very nice surprise very very beautiful thank you Cindy I appreciate you thinking of me and this card is from my friend all the way in the Netherlands from Daniela Benick and it's, she's just done such a great job here. This is um, Night of Navy, and look at all of the distressing she did to get a, a rustic look. And her painting here is just phenomenal. All Everything is glued down, and everything traveled through the mail really well all the way from the Netherlands. And there's a beautiful note inside, but also look at how she's distressed the inside she is so talented. Card making genius. That's from Daniela. Hi Sharon, how are you? Fran, your daughter wants to be a boa constrictor? Wow, that is a lofty goal. A boa boa all those snakes just kind of I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really a snake person, so I leave that to my husband if the kids need to watch or do anything with the, you know, kind of reptiles and stuff. So I have a few things to share before we get started with our project. <coughs> so during um, the month of September, Stampin' Up! has a promotion that is the Dashing Along Designer Series paper. And this is what the paper looks like here. There are some projects here that show a little sneak peek of what it could look like in your particular project. And I'm, I'm really in love with the paper. It's really beautiful. And the way that you earn this paper is with an order of $250 minimum, then this is a free paper. It gets added to your order. If you also host a party, then you can you can earn it if the total party sales are $250. So it's um, it's a really good, nice thing, you know, and this is the time that we all start getting ready for our different holiday crafting. So this is something that would, would get it now and you would be able to use it whenever you make your Christmas cards. Bonus days are still here, but they're almost gone. So. If you have not yet posted your or made your order, your online order, then please don't wait. 
get your $5 coupon for every $50 in product that you spend and Stampin' Up! will email it directly to you, a $50 coupon code that you can use during the month of September. Now the holiday catalog goes live on September 5th. So if you have your codes and you wanna use it for new catalog items, be sure to hold on to them if you wanna use them for new catalog items. Otherwise, just September 1st, have at it and use your codes. August host code is here. And if you go to my website at jennyhalldesign.com and enter this code, if your order is $149 or less, then you are able to use this host code. And this allows me to be able to send extra special gifts to you with your order. Color Your Season is still around, so if you like that watercolor pencil set as much as I do, or if you like the blended seasons and the stitched seasons, then this is a great time to get it. It's not too late. You can still get your hands on it. There's a lot of possibilities out there. The holiday catalogs are here and going out in the mail. So if you are in need of a holiday catalog and you do not already work with a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, then let me know and I would love to be your demonstrator and to send you a holiday catalog. I send my catalogs out in a kind of like, not a bubble mailer, but it's a plastic bag and it has lots of goodies in with it too. There's always a handmade card. There's usually some samples of some new papers coming out and all sorts of other fun things. So if you would like to get one, this is the annual catalog. If you also don't have a demonstrator and you'd like an annual catalog, let me know and I can send these catalogs out to you together. There's never a wrong time to get your hands on a Stampin' Up! catalog. So I want to also share a project that's on my blog today and it's on my YouTube channel today and this is called an explosion box card so who has seen this card today on my blog and my YouTube channel I'd love to hear your thoughts on it it's a fun project to create and I like the way that it's not a typical project now, whenever you gift this, it would be gifted as a box. It will not be flattened out like, um, there's different kinds of box cards where it flattens out and it can go in the mail. This is not that kind of a box card, although I'm sure there's some way that we could get it to, uh, to be mailed, but it's not really something that, that I, I like it being in a box. And it wouldn't hurt to have some ribbon tied around it too. Okay, great, you guys have seen that. So how I created this is all on my blog and it's all on my YouTube channel, a step-by-step. -step. I just wanted to show you in person exactly what it's looking like. Now I will apologize in advance because Nate got a hold of this. He really, really likes this project. And he's taken off some of the rhinestones. You can see the little sticky piece is still here, but Nate is not. <laughs> And so when you remove the box top, then the card flips open. And Nate has already taken some of my pieces off. That's how much he likes this. He wanted to play with it and just really have a good time. So this is a great opportunity for me to show you that even if they come off, then you just use some more snail adhesive, which is what I used on these, I believe and I can put it right back into place easily. And this is made with the new Toil and Trouble Designer Series paper. So is, are these items. These items are also from the same pack of Designer Series paper. And you can get very elaborate and build up the sides in this type of a card project. And it's it's just really a lot of fun. I can see getting really involved with this. And if you have pieces that kind of come up a little bit from here, as long as they don't take up too much space of what's in the middle, and you scale down the middle a little bit, then whatever's here, like imagine there's something poking out here. As long as there's room for it, like offset them, then you can have this be 
a, a really elaborate, very elaborate um, decoration. And I'm thinking this will probably be more of a Halloween decoration than just a card. But my kids are just in love with this. And then you fold it back up and put the little lid back on. And then if you want, if you were going to take this to give it to somebody, then I would put a piece of ribbon and tie it in a bow on the top. And then there's an orientation on the front that lets you know that this is where the front of it is. So that way when it's opened up, the pieces inside are directional. Uh, yes, Philomena, you're right. This is, um, this is something that it did go together pretty fast, I have to say. Um, I did not have a pattern for this. I just kind of freestyled it. Um, I imagined what size box I would want, and so that's the size that I started working from. And the, I've seen um, these boxes before where the lid comes down significantly, but I wanted a shallow lid that would be able to allow me to put some decoration on the front of the box. So I also have another one that I'll show you. It's not the same type of box, but this card is going to be on my blog this weekend. And this is made with new holiday catalog product. And this is, I'm showing it to you now because the Blended Seasons is not going to be around for too much longer. So if you really like the look of this or of the Stitched Seasons Framelits dies, then don't wait to order. So I created, this is a bridge card. You can see how it lays flat this way or it lays flat this way. And this is the new Winter Woods bundle. So I stamped in basic gray. And this is Smoky Slate and basic gray cardstock that I painted with this shimmer paint. And very, very easy, easy to, um, to create. And I, I did this card based on a tutorial from Addinctive Designs. I just changed out some of the products and used it with the Blended Seasons bundle. So if you're interested in the pattern on how to create this type of card, then go over to Adding the Designs and look for lots of labels, bridge fold card. And this is going to be on my blog on Saturday, I think. So you'll get to see some really good photographs of it. But this is, um, this is a lot of fun to create. And this is with that uh, blended seasons, the just the dies though, the stitch seasons dies. And this is a really big card because I used the biggest of the dies. So um, thank you, Betty. So you could scale it down a little bit to fit inside of a standard envelope. This would have to go in a custom envelope because it is six and a half inches this direction lengthwise at six and a half inches and that will not fit into a standard envelope. It will however fit into um, like a one of those mailers like a, a letter mailer you could put it in something like that or just make your own on the envelope punch board. So I wanted to share these two little fancy cards. I have started my Halloween card making <laughs> obviously and there is always loads and loads of fun to have during Halloween. And I love the images that Stampin' Up! has got this year. Um, they're very cute and not scary. And that's perfect for my small family because my children are young and we don't do scary Halloween, we do cute Halloween. So we're going to get started on this project for today. I have here some paper towels. I'm going to fold them over. These are the ones that are in small segments. So I want to be able to really get a nice coverage here. I'm glad you guys like that bridge card. So this is glossy white paper and I'm hoping that you can see the shine. One side is matte and the other side is shiny. And if you're not familiar with glossy white paper, then this paper is like photograph paper where um, a photograph is shiny on one side and it's not shiny on the other. So I'm just flattening out here. Now these are a couple of sample, uh, just a little scraps and we're going to try a few different techniques on the glossy white paper to get a different look before we actually have, because I've got a piece here that's already pre-cut, 
to start on our actual project. So when I use glossy white paper, there's a couple of different ways that I use it. Um, one is ink blending, and the other is this um, alcohol. I'm not sure what the technique is called, but I use alcohol, rubbing alcohol in a Stampin' Spritzer, and I just kind of spritz it around, and then the alcohol reacts with the ink, and it's like an amazing bubble festival. It's beautiful. So this is the kind of alcohol that I'm using today in my Stampin' Spritzer, and it's called isopropyl alcohol. Just regular from the, from the pharmacy or wherever you grab things of that nature. And I've got an idea to use Brusho. I've never used Brusho on glossy white paper with alcohol before. So this is really exciting for me. When I was working on ideas to share today, I came up with several different things that I thought would really be fun. But what it really, really came down to is I like to have fun when I'm creating and I like to have fun when I'm sharing with you all as well. So I thought it would be really fun for everybody if we tried something that I've never tried before. I'm not sure if this is something that anybody else has tried before either because I just thought, well, what could the results possibly be? So we're going to make sure that because this alcohol is going to spray and be uh, pretty heavy into the card, I've got the silicone craft sheet for protection and I've got the paper towels. So there's, there's lots of things that I can use to blot up and help dab away. So Brecho Crystal Color is from Stampin' Up. It's not made by Stampin' Up, but it's packaged and sold by Stampin' Up. And it is from Colorcraft. There are five different colors that come in the package of Brusho, and I really don't play with it enough. I should, but it's one of those products where I kind of put it with my coloring tools and I don't remember to get it back out very quickly. So today is going to be the yellow Brusho, and we can probably try this with lots of colors. But I want to be able to use the card that's made today over on the Global Design Project this week. So we're going to kind of stick with their color, um, color challenge theme, which is Flirty Flamingo, Daffodil Delight, and Soft Suede. So we're going to use pink, yellow, and brown today. So I'm going to set this aside. But if you're interested in the brush out or any of the tools that I'm using today, they all will be linked in the video description on YouTube. They will also be on my blog on Friday with this card project. And you can get them in my online store today. You do not have to wait. You can go to JennyHallDesign.com, <coughs> excuse me, click on Shop Now, and you can get your hands on these products today. So first thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to spray a little bit of this rubbing alcohol on the corner of the glossy white paper. And so I'm just going to sprinkle and see what happens with the brush -o. Now when brush -o, um gets with any kind of water, it always has this um, sprinkly type of effect. But I'm not sure that it's going to have that same effect here. And I don't think it is. I don't, I don't see that I'm going to get any particular unique results. So I have a standby, and that's the re-inker or the ink refill of Daffodil Delight. And we may have to switch over to that. Now, I see some pretty good movement happening here. That's not so bad. Well, let's give it um, a little bit more time to get a good reaction. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and sprinkle a good amount onto this little scrap. Now brusho comes out as little color crystals and it's very concentrated. So if you have never used brusho, then I suggest that you give yourself some play time when you first go to use it. Now I've taken my paper piercing tool and gone through the lid three times and pierced three little holes and it's kind of like a little salt shaker or a pepper shaker. 
so that you can get out a small amount at a time. All right, so here comes the rubbing alcohol, and I'm gonna spray from a little higher up so that I can get a nice coverage. Smells like a doctor's office already. <laughs> so this is definitely giving me a nice reaction, but I'm not sure if it is the reaction that I wanna use today. But it is a beautiful burst of color. So we've got our idea on how it looks with the brush -o. and you can also add other colors in as well it's it's not necessary to just use one color but the way brush -o is designed I'm going to just flip this over and clean it off the way brush -o is designed is that it will it has different color granules built into it and so there's not always a solid isn't that pretty I hope you can see it well it's really looking nice really pretty okay so we are going to now do a here's one way here's another way with comparison and I want to use the ink refill instead of the brush -o and see what kind of interesting looks and kind of you know investigate which way would be better so I'm just going to put a few drops of the ink refill because it will go a long way and I'm going to kind of tap it a little bit to get some smaller. I hope I can get some smaller pieces to come out. I have to give it a little pressure. So if you've never played with glossy white paper and ink refills, this is something that's a lot of fun. My team and I have done this and it's really amazing results. But I must warn you to be careful that this is a very powerful spray and it can splatter everything out without being conscious of it. So I will kind of lift up this paper towel to kind of catch any spray that wants to run off. Now this is really fun results. I'm gonna move this guy over here to get him out of the way. And the force of the sprayer can really move around the ink refill. So you can see that there's there's lots of movement and I can pick this up and move it around as well. And then I'm going to let some of it run off. And it's going to give me a very unique look. I got lots of alcohol on this, so I'm gonna just kinda get it cleaned up a little bit as we go. The one difference that I see between the two is that there is a place where the ink refill actually went onto the paper and it's gonna stay there, which is okay. But on the brush -o, I see that that's a bit different. There's a look to the brush -o that is just as organic. I don't have to use as much alcohol and it, it's a fun look. I kind of like it. Now on the glossy white paper there is also lots of possibilities. I see the color is continuing to pool up here. This is going to take a long while to dry but imagine using this for die cuts. There's a lot of fun that can be had using glossy white paper. But I do like the look of the brush -o. I like the fact that I didn't have to completely get the paper absolutely soaking wet to make the color move around. See, it's, it's only saturated on the sides. So I am liking the look of the brush -o, and it's drying relatively fast also. So I think brush -o might be the way to go today on this project. So I'm going to set this little guy aside because it is going to take quite a while to get dried up. And then we can start recreating for the project. So now we know what it's going to look like with each different way that this can be created. This little silicone craft sheet is just a perfect tool to be able to help with messy, fun techniques. So you guys are liking 
like in the alcohol. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun. And I love the fact that every single project is going to come out looking different. It's always going to be a natural and unique look. So for this project today, I have a very small piece of this uh, glossy white paper and I have a piece of Whisper White that is an eighth of an inch larger. One thing to remember when working with a, a lot of different techniques is that the paper may change a little bit. So I have found that having something to have it lay on and keep it supported is always a really great idea. And we can call that a layer or we can call it a mat. There's lots of different ways that we can that we can help that support that little area. So I'm going to use this little piece here, and I have a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding. I'm folding it, but it's in um, landscape mode orientation, I should say. So here is our piece from today. I'm going to try to get it as flat as I can. And we're going to load it up with some more of the brush -o. So I think the more brush -o I use, the more fun results I can get. So I'm going to use quite a bit of brush -o. Make sure I get it all the way out to the corners as well. And so we already know that it's going to give me this beautiful yellow look. And I, ha and it, I know that it's going to have different little tiny flecks in with it, but I have an idea to just put a hint of the brilliant red here and there, just to give it a little bit of uh, variation. That's the great thing about having the whole box of brushos that you can do things like this. Mixing colors works really good too. I've also used brush -o in a palette and just wet it with a water brush and it works really great for water coloring. So I'm going to grab this silicone again. I should have put it back here, but I forgot. And I'm gonna go up high so I get a nice coverage here. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Have a look, friends. I am digging this. Lots and lots of fun. All right, I don't want to put too much because then my paper is going to get way too wet. But can you see how things are starting to kind of pull apart from one another? I really like that look. So I think the alcohol is done now. What I do want to do is get some of this excess alcohol off of the edges where it's trying to run off. So I'm going to use my paper towel and just kind of dab along the edge so that some of that color, some of the fluid, will absorb off of the edge of the paper. I've got a nice concentration going here on the sides. I'm just dabbing it off. So I would say that it's the alcohol that is the catalyst on this type of paper. And it doesn't matter if it's an ink refill or if it's like brush -o color. It doesn't matter which one is, is added to bring the color to the project. It's the alcohol that is the catalyst to actually make these fun things happen to it. That's really bright. Wow. Just dabbing off of the edges. Oh, thanks for sharing the video, Anne Marie. I appreciate that. And this dries up a lot faster, too. Now, this is the one we made, and you can see that it's still kind of wet. It feels like a piece of wet cardboard right now. And this one here actually has almost dried. So we may have to help this one a little along the way. I do like the subtle color more in this. I can feel some of the granules 
that didn't melt with the alcohol. They just kind of, I don't know, they just kind of stayed intact and stayed kind of grainy, which is also fun. All right, so this one I think is just about ready to get dried, so I'll bring the heat tool out and we'll dry it as best we can so that we can use it in a project today. Otherwise, I would be really happy to let it dry on its own, but we want to be able to make a project with this today. So I'm going to give it a dry. Now these other pieces are not, by no means gonna go in the trash. I can definitely use them for die cuts if nothing else. I'll just lay a die cut on them. I'm, I'm going to use the low heat setting on my heat tool. And trying not to warp the paper, maybe I'll just kinda go between the three different papers to Make sure I don't apply too much heat at any one time to one piece of paper. So I'll flip it over here. Can you see the difference of how much ink has really soaked down into the one that we use, the ink refill? Of course, I did use a lot of the rubbing alcohol for that one as well. Hello, Belinda. How are you? Thanks for stopping in. So this one's going to warp a bit because the paper is really saturated. So I know that when I go to use this, it's going to, it's going to need to lay down. So I'll probably put it underneath a clear block for some time so that it'll flatten out. Gonna turn this over, try to get it back down to being flat. I think that'll be nice enough. So I'll set these aside. Now the colors, the Daffodil Delight is is one of the colors then in the color challenge and color challenge. And I don't think that this one, this is more looking like crushed curry. Sorry about that, putting some things away. Uh, this one definitely, adding the red, brought me away from Daffodil to Light. But I'm going to use this anyhow because I aimed for Daffodil to Light. And isn't this gorgeous? Kind of looks marbly. Hope you can see it well. And this one is very subtle, very subtle colors. So one thing that I always try to do, if I can, if I can help it, is if adding ink refills, I always try to drop the ink refill and then start spraying immediately so that the, the um, ink doesn't leave these spots. But sometimes the spots are fun. So it's all good. You, there, there's nothing that you can do that will mess up these techniques because as you can see, we've got three different results and they all are very viable. So there's, there's lots of possibilities. So this little piece here, it kind of looks like fire to me. Isn't that something? Wow, that's very bright. So I'm going to use some tear and tape on the back because this, is, this paper is definitely not going to want to lay down. It wants to curl up. It has been manipulated and um, a lot of fluid has been added to the paper. So I'm going to use tear and tape. Sometimes it's a little bit stubborn. There we go. I always push the tear and tape in with my fingernail because that will activate the tape into the paper. So 
So I've got lots of different small pieces here. So Fran is interested to try the brush -o. Yes, Fran, I tell you what, sometimes I wake up from sleeping and I'm like, if I go to sleep with a purpose, with a, with a particular technique or a particular product or, you know, whatever it is, if I go to bed and I have it in my head, then sometimes I dream different designs and different color combinations of things to try and I wake up with some crazy ideas. So that is the brainchild of this project. There's lots of crazy ideas going on. <laughs> So I'm using my take a pick tool and this is going to help me use with the paper piercing end. I can take the release tape off very easily. You can also use your actual paper piercing tool, but this take a pick tool is so handy because it has so many different uses that I find that if I reach for it, then whatever I'm needing the tool for, it's going to work. So if you haven't yet gotten yours, it will be available in the holiday catalog. The holiday catalog goes active on September the 5th. And we're almost finished here. Removing the tape and I will add that to the layer. And the layer is 1 8 of an inch larger on each side. There we are, and I'll turn it over just so that I can make sure that I'm activating. I can actually use this end. Um, I can activate that adhesive by pushing the paper and the adhesive together. This is just the cap on the, uh, the opposite end. So there's lots of ways to use this wonderful little take a pick tool. All right, so now let's progress with our card project. I wanted to have this raised up here in the center and have it be a little bit of a focal point. But it is quite a bit more vibrant than what I had imagined. I thought I was going to get a much lighter shade of yellow. So I might change the colors up a little bit. My glossy white paper is also fantastic for ink blending. So if you have a sponge dauber in your stamp pads, then it's wonderful to be able to, to take the ink. It just takes it and mixes it around. It's so, it's so wonderful to work with that the glossy white paper is just fun. Now some of the gloss has come off of the paper because not all of the powder has melted. So I, I can take my finger here and still have a little bit of yellow. So I think it would be worthwhile. I'm grabbing a tissue and I'm going to just kind of wipe this away a little bit and see if that's going to help some of that powder be absorbed. I don't want it to come off on the rest of the card, and I don't want it to come off on the hands of the person receiving this. So let me get some water. Stampin' Spritzers come two to a package, and one of them I keep filled with water. The other one I keep filled with rubbing alcohol. So this is regular water. I'm just gonna wipe this down with water. And that should get all of the excess powder away. Oh yeah, see, I made a mess there. I should have picked up my paper. That's okay. But it did take off that excess, and now I've got that shininess back to the glossy white paper. So we'll see what we can do to cover up that little boo-boo. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for stopping in. Okay, so let's add something else to this particular card project that we're using glossy white paper and brush -o. 
So the brush can be put away now, and I always store it with the box straight up because there are tiny pinprick holes in all of those little canisters, and I don't want it to spill out, so I store it somewhere that I can slide it in or set it on. I'm going to be stamping with Beautiful Promenade, and there's so many lovely images in this stamp set. There's so much to choose from, and I wanted to use a floral image, and we could actually, if you, if you have never tried it, you can heat emboss on this paper very easily. It works really great. So this is the image that I chose, the two little flowers with the greenery. And we can stamp it. I've got Flirty Flamingo here. Flirty Flamingo is a really pretty pink. And I have already die cut from the framelits that match Beautiful Promenade, which are the Beautiful Layers Thinlets. And I've already die cut the stamped image. And there's lots of images in this die set. I also wanted to add some of these open work leaves. And I've die cut three of them in advance. So I'll be able to feature those on the project. This really large die here is fun. It looks like I have already die cut, and I, and I have, I've already die cut a white piece but I didn't use it on the project that I intended it for, so <laughs> what I did is I just left it in here so that whenever I need one, then I'll have a die cut ready to go. So the colors that I'm working with are pink, yellow, and brown, and I wanna give some life to some of these images. I know that I'm going to stamp my sentiment down here near the bottom, so maybe we can go ahead and put that in there. And I want to stamp with something that is narrow, um, that will fit nicely down here. And this is a great opportunity when you use some sort of a, of a technique, especially like maybe a window area, then it's great to have a small sentiment. So I'm just going to use this one that says, You Are Loved. I'll put it here on this side of my same block. I'm multitasking a block here. <laughs> and I will stamp that out in soft suede. Soft suede is a really pretty brown color and seems to be very trendy this fall. And because this is a very small sentiment, then it's not going to take over the rest of the design. Ah! So it's just going to kind of complement things here. All right, and I want to use some of these beautiful white die cuts and maybe that would be something that could help to cover up my little slip that I made. We'll see how that works out. But I wanna give some more color to, to this. Um, the pink works really great, but pink and brown is a really beautiful color combination. Um, I've got the Soft Suede Stampin' Blends markers, and these are alcohol markers. So uh, there's a dark and there's a light, and I'll start with the light marker. And I'm going to just kind of add it around the tips of where these little leaves and buds are. I could have done the rock and roll technique, but I thought it would be good to kind of capitalize on some of this white space that comes out around the die cuts it's going to give a different look. And I'll go over again with the dark. 
just on the tips or on the edges. And right now it's just kind of looking like yuck. That's to be expected. So I'm going to let that soak in for just a few minutes. And as it's kind of sinking down into the paper, then I have the clear color lifter, which is it's like a blender. If you're familiar with alcohol markers, then this would be the blender. Um, and this is going to help me get some of this brown to kind of fade back in a very natural, easy way. But it's not going to react with the dye ink that I've already stamped with. That's how the alcohol and the water-based inks work together. So I'm starting from the inside of the image and just kind of pushing things around to the outside. And it kind of gives a little bit of an aged look to the paper. It looks a bit weathered. Now there's too much white space here in the middle, so I think it needs a bit of pink. Let me grab a pink marker as well. And here are some more newer colors. These are the petal pink, and these are a really unique pink color because they're not so much like girly pink, they're more of a earthy color. So I'm going to start off here in the middle. With this pink in the darkest part of the flower. And then I'll use the lighter of the two shades to kind of push it out. And this is going to help balance out those dark tones and make the color not look like it's um, make the flower not look like it's just empty color because the stamp shows the outline of a flower. I'm not sure if all of this is going to work together or not. <laughs> it's definitely an experimental day here in the studio. I do like the darker of the two. So this looks a bit aged, and this looks like some blazing sunshine, and I'm just not, I'm not liking this combination at all. Hmm, this is the idea that I had, but this was be way before I knew that this particular background was going to be as vibrant as it is. So I need to find a way to work the pink back into the project but in a very subtle kind of way. Hmm, so now I'm thinking. <laughs> That's the way it goes with crafting, doesn't it? We all have we all have these moments of of the hmm. So I'm thinking that orange would probably look much better with this than would any other color. And, or maybe just white, white and brown with a little bit of hints of pink. Maybe that's the way to go. So I'm going to kind of switch gears here. I've got an extra piece of paper on the inside of my card ready just in case. And I think I will stamp it in the, a very, very light color tone. So I've got a couple of choices here. Look at the mango. The mango is like almost, it's almost a match for how the brush -o turned out. And then we've got this really pretty petal pink. 
And I just don't know that that's going to do it. I don't know. Hmm. I tell you, sometimes the choices that we all have, especially in colors. Uh, yeah, there's a there's there's an opportunity. Um, let's see. Joanne suggests to dye some pink leaves and tuck it behind the yellow panel. Dawn says to stamp off. Fran is suggesting um, a whole tray of hmms that did not get used. <laughs> Yeah, we all have those moments. Okay, so I'm going to totally go rogue on this um, and go in a completely different direction. I don't know that I'll be able to use this card for that challenge, but it's a fun, it's a fun color to move to. So we are going to fly into the blues and get rid of the pinks. The pinks are done. And we're just going to go crazy on blues because this color, orange, it's almost orange now. We might as well just call it orange. It is definitely much more vibrant. And I believe I can work in enough color to be able to get this to be a nice looking flower. So I'm going to stamp in blue to start off with. That's too dark. Let's use a second generation. And that is Pacific Point. So with Pacific Point, then I can move over. Now this is regular Whisper White, so I can add color with a blender pen or with stamp and write markers or with my stamp and blends or with a sponge dauber. There's lots of different ways, but I'm gonna bring my daubers out. And I have a little, a whole little cubby here that's labeled blue. And this is a light blue, and this is a more vibrant blue. And I'll start with the light, which is Coastal Cabana. Okay, and I'm going to, I'm gonna dab off first before I start adding the color. And I'll start in the middle. where it's going to need to be more dark. And kind of work my way up into the other areas. Now I will plan on fussy cutting this, so I'm not worried about going outside the lines because my flower is not going to have a border. It's not going to have a white border around it. I'm going to really go with this very vibrant Coastal Cabana and then work way, work my way back with Blueberry Bushel the other direction. So this is going to be the darker of my two daubers. Really dab off and just kind of touch on to the edges of those petals. This one stamped off so brightly, didn't it? Hi, Donna. How are you? Thanks for stopping over today. We're having a bit of a crazy craft time because the design that I planned took a bit of a turn. So now we're going in a different direction. So I'm dialing back some of this blue. This is Blueberry Bushel. We stamped with Pacific Point and we used some Coastal Cabana. And now I'm going to add a touch of purple to the outside, just to the outside edges. Let me see if there's enough on this dauber, there's not. There we go, this one has 
been used with Blackberry Bliss, I think. So I'm gonna just add that to the outside edges where the stamp lines are. It's gonna give me just a little fun amount of color. Nice fun purple. And then I'll come back with this Coastal Cabana and make sure that it doesn't get lost. And now my paper has got lots of color in it. Okay. Well, we certainly have taken a different turn from the colors that we planned. <laughs> and I'm going to cut this out and see how it's going to look on our design. There is a framelit for this, but I think I could probably cut it out much faster than going over to my Big Shot. And the Big Shot is going to leave a bit of a border around it. And that's the one difference whenever fussy cutting, I can get as close as I need to up to the stamped lines. And the framelit is a preset size. So this is gonna be a very bright flower. Not planned, but if it works, it works. Okay, what do you guys think? <laughs> That's a little bit of a, of a different look, isn't it? It's, it's a quite a bit of a different look. Um, I think it needs some gold. It's a bit too dark. It, it needs something. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it is what it is. <laughs> I tell you, sometimes in crafting, it just kind of takes such a such a turn of a different direction than than what was planned. That that this is kind of um, this is kind of the look that sometimes I might not have wanted to get, but um, it's what I ended up with. And I can certainly work another flower over and lighten up the colors, but for the for the intents and purposes of what this demonstration is today is I wanted to really focus on the background technique and not on the, the crazy U-turn that's taking on the flower. <laughs> so I hope you guys are laughing with me. And we'll take a look again. Um, let's get this stuff out of the way so it doesn't really distract from what our technique was. We have made three different panels and this is the glossy white paper with alcohol, that's actual rubbing alcohol, and with uh, ink refills. And this is the Delight Daisy, the Daffodil Delight ink refill. It gives a much more subtle coverage of color. And this is the brush -o that is just yellow. And this is with glossy white paper and the alcohol in the Stampin' Spritzer. So I use the alcohol in this, and I do have it labeled. And then this was a more concentrated yellow, and I shook in a little bit of red, which gives that brilliant fiery look to it. So um, I could, yes, Joanne, I could use a white gel pen to be able to lighten this up. That that is a possibility. We'll see what happens. I'll have to I'll have to think on it for a little while and <laughs> see how it ends up. But I absolutely love the way that the brush -o has reacted with the glossy white paper. So glossy white paper is something that if you haven't yet worked with it, then I would encourage you to add it to your next Stampin' Up! order and get the pack. It's a, it's a small pack, but it's eight and a half by 11 sheets and you can cut it to whatever size you need for your project. And as you can see here, I've got some really small scraps of it and it works out just fine. So there's lots of different ways that we can make our project work and fun techniques always help along the way as well. So I'm gonna close out today and leave you with a bit of a mystery because I'm going to use this, but I'm gonna have to figure out exactly how I'm going to use it. And 
if you tune into my blog on Friday, you'll see how it came out. But it's definitely back to the drawing board for me. Um, the technique's wonderful, and I hope that you try it. And if you do, I'd love to see a picture of how it comes out, or I'd love to be able to see how you use this technique in your crafting. Uh, thanks for stopping, Betty. Have a good day. So I'm going to close and leave you all with a bit of a mystery and just tune back in on Friday to see how it came out. So thanks again for spending time with me today and I hope that everybody has a wonderful, fantastic day and I will see you again live on my Facebook channel on Wednesday. That's going to be next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. And I have several more videos on my YouTube channel planned for this week, and I've got some really special cards. So I hope that you will pop over there to my YouTube channel and get a look at them there. And don't forget that that card video that's on today is the, is the explosion box made with the new Cauldron Bubble Bundle from Stampin' Up! So if you're interested, I do have some tutorials that are for sale on my blog. So go to JennyHallDesign.com and click on Tutorials and it'll bring you to the Tutorials page and that's one way that you can support. Um, I can help bring you more card making projects through your support which I am very thankful for. Alright so everybody have a fantastic day. For those watching overseas I hope you have a restful sleep and I'll see you all again next time. Bye bye! Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!